Welcome guys, it's Truthman here from uh, Overclocking TV. This is OMG Overclock Mod Game and in this podcast we invite experts to uncover uh, the behind the scenes and the future of tech. Uh, the, the podcast is streamed live on our Twitch channel, so this is when we do actually record. Uh, usually we do that on Friday evening, but today uh, is a little bit different because we did not make one last week. And we wanted to uh, speak with uh, with Alva, which is our guest tonight. And uh, you will see uh, you will see why. Like the timing is actually just the the way we can do it. Uh, we can do it like this. Uh, the True. replay is always available on YouTube as well. So that's gonna be something. If you miss this live, you can always find it back on YouTube with the videos, or you can find it back on your uh, latest podcast platform. Uh, speaking of which, if you missed the replay from last week, check it out whenever you get your podcast or on the YouTube. Uh, channel for overclocking tv today's topic for this podcast slash video slash live slash everything in between um is a hot one i mean it's summer it's pretty hot i mean here it's like almost like 30 almost 32 c in the room i am in i don't know for you alva that's uh, that might be a yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty hot as well but i know you have ac you, you you're you're on the good hand so because you have you have ac for that well. Actually, I'm in the shooting lab right now, so this is uh, basically like pretty cool. So probably 24, <laughs> 25. <laughs> okay, so l lucky yeah. you, lucky you, lucky noob. Um, so today, <laughs> today's topic or hot one uh, with the release that we had early uh, early July 2019. Uh, a lot of changes uh, happened. So we have uh, Ryzen 3000 series, which is based on Zen 2 uh, general architecture. We have RTX Super, which is an increase from uh, the regular RTX. And we have the Radeon uh, 5700. Uh, but all that came out at pretty much the same time, early July. Uh, some were announced a little bit before, some were not. Um, what does that mean for you? What does that no what does the expert think about that and this is why we have uh alva tonight uh, to talk about this topic i really wanted to invite him because that's someone i admire uh for <laughs> like like honestly i admire for years and I, and i told you that alva before we record that uh that show and you were reacting the same way i admire you uh -huh. for years because you're a positive voice in the industry and a dedicated a person in reviewing the PC component. So Alva, aka Lucky Noob, thanks for being with us today. Uh, so thanks Drew, for having me. So basically for anybody that uh, doesn't know, I, uh, I'm i working for uh, Indonesian uh, website, uh, PC hardware website. So I'm doing usually mostly CPU review and then motherboard, uh, CPU motherboard memory, and then uh, the, the graphic card too. So basically the desktop. Sometimes I do the, the notebooks, but uh, not so much. So basically, it's a CPU, motherboard, memory, and graphic cards, and that's my uh, my review job and my side job is being a professional overclocker. So I, well, I do overclock a lot of stuff and then put the result online and tell people uh, how to optimize this their setup if they really want to overclock their stuff, and also uh, helping some vendors trying to tweak their hardware if they need my feedback, something like that. So for, and you have been in the industry for a long time as well. Like when did uh, when did you really yeah. started? Well, uh, I start work with Jagged Review. Uh, basically, my probation time is started from 2010, but I really work for them is basically from 2011 after I finished my uh, course in Australia. So I moved to Australia for a couple of months just to finish some of my semiconductor course. So well, after that, I start working with Jagged Review until today. So yeah, I started from about 2011-ish, I guess. So That's, yeah. that's pretty good. It's a, it's a eight, nine years uh, streak. It's yeah, eight, a... eight, eight, nine years. Yeah, so, but but you see, in, in, my, in my office, I'm not really the uh, senior, if you really want to call it, because all of them are pretty much already, like what, more than 10 years experience. So before they go to Jagged Review to work, they're already working for a big media in Indonesia, Chip Magazine. So they already have their experience there. While I'm just like a very new kid on the block, and they just ask me, "Hey, we're we're interested in the way that you do overclock. So are you available to do some work uh, work with us or something like that?" And so one thing led to another, and bam, I'm there. Yeah, this, <laughs> so, that's yeah. that that's pretty that's pretty awesome. I actually, uh, I, I love to hear the backstory all the time. That the things that. I mean, and I think like uh, like people can can hear that as well. Like you're very humble. I I know it's very uh, it's very uncommon for extreme overclockers to be that humble. 
even though uh, <laughs> and, and i'm not i'm not judging or anything i'm just saying that you've all been you've always been like this and knowing you for like almost a decade now it's like we always knew you like this so this is this is a big point uh you're someone that i um, i appreciate a lot and i admire for for your work um so you say you write for jagat review so it's a yep. jagat review uh G A G A T review dot com. Uh, what com. what does that mean actually? Uh, basically, Jagat is like the Sanskrit word for the universe. So, uh, in put it in short, it's the universe of reviews. I mean, the goals are to give the like Indonesian specific Indonesian because uh, I really wanted to do like English content, but they told me that hey, uh, we are really focusing on Indonesian uh, on our uh, our own market. So that's specifically for Indonesian, and then try to write anything about about tech, basically about tech. So uh, there's uh, a, the big division is the Jagat Review, right? So mm -hmm. you see, I I work in also in the small subdivision of it, the OC dot Jagat Review dot com, and there uh, there's a people uh, working on the game site as well. That's uh, for the game and esports and things like that, and also. Uh, they have the new one, the gadget ones, uh, and pretty much uh, about from the start of this year, uh, we are doing more and more video coverage. But I'm I'm doing still more articles, like written articles, than video though. So, so you're yeah. still on the uh, old school uh, bandwagon doing a PC component review in the Britain uh, kind of. Uh, well, I'm still trying to do uh, to move it to the video uh, to do video uh, content. But you see, when I do like an in-depth article, because you see uh, most uh, like tech tubers or anyone that does tech do it for like a 10 minute video or maybe 15 minute video. Well, if I'm going to transform my review into uh, a written review into a video, that will make like about 30 minutes video. But apparently, I'm glad that uh, I'm doing it like uh, for the first time uh, back in the Zen 2 review, uh, like last week. And I do a 46 minute video, and people doesn't seem to mind. So I'm kind of glad and try to do more, maybe. That's pretty Hopefully. cool. We're just gonna we'll be uh, looking forward to what you're gonna do. Uh, all this video will be in English or in uh, Indonesian. Uh, the my own video is only Indonesian only. Well, well, Indonesian and English is not that much. I mean, I throw some English word for some untrans untranslatable words, but I'm not really sure if I talk a really good English. So, uh, well, mostly it's in Indonesian. So yeah, <laughs> good, good to know, and we can't wait to see uh, to see more of uh, of the things that you're gonna be doing for that. All right, let's dive into the topics for tonight. Uh, yep. We have three main topics: so Radeon new Radeon cards, uh, the RX uh, 5700 and 5700 XT. We have the RTX Super, and we have Zen 2 slash Ryzen th uh, third generation slash X570 motherboards. We'll just gonna start with the with the GPU side. So on the AMD side, uh, basically AMD released the seven nanometer uh, Navy GPUs. Uh, so there is three GPUs basically: the RX fifty seven hundred regular, uh, RX fifty seven hundred XT, and the XT fifty anniversary edition because that's the fifty anniversary of AMD as yeah, well. Basically, it's two. <laughs> so if if you if you count because the the fiftieth anniversary edition is basically the uh, we call it a bin version. I'm not really sure because I haven't really seen one in a while. So it's a same GPU as the XT, just with the higher clocks and higher so, price yeah. tag. <laughs> Hair first. Well, that's like a collector's item. That's yeah. like 50th anniversary. With the same with the two seven hundred X that they have. That's kind of well, uh, like collector's edition. But the good part about this one is they actually bend the cards and they pre overclock the cards. So well, that that probably justifies the price. Maybe. Well, it's it's not much. It's fifty bucks more. It's not it's not that yeah. much. So there's like a a three forty nine, three ninety nine, four forty nine. Uh, for the for the release uh that's although one of the first gpu on the market to be pci express 4.0 uh that's gonna have to sure. be working in conjunction with some other motherboards um so what's your opinion about uh this new rx 5, uh, 5000 series if you can call it this way 
Okay, so uh, like I told you before that I haven't been testing this graphic card really, uh, really like a lot in a very in-depth detail. I do get some numbers out of it. So, well, for Indonesian market, I mean, uh, the graphic card just priced on the range that, well, people can still buy it, although it's slightly above the, the, the average, the yearly average that uh, according to our own local survey that people are going to buy. But so for, for me personally, uh, uh, the GPU is interesting because AMD is trying a lot of new stuff, like putting new architecture. And then, well, all, you can see that people are really trying to say that, hey, this is just another GCN architecture. But apparently, this Navy architecture have some really new uh, processing blocks, if you if you will. I mean, it's it's it doesn't have something like uh, NVIDIA RTX where, where they try to. Uh, bring something like really new, like real-time ray tracing in hardware and uh, like uh, some tensor cores to accelerate certain other uh, processing. But the the architecture and the way that EMD try to make the the GPU work is for me personally, it's interesting. And this is their second seven nanometer GPU after the Radeon 11. So uh, depending on how you look at things and depending on how the graphic card operates, I think power-wise, uh, power-wise, uh, power and also performance-wise, is a really uh, competitive card. And uh, besides the power, I think the big stuff that people are actually really surprised with is that EMD, a couple of days before the launch, they announced that they're changing the price. So basically, it's kind of almost almost fifty dollar. I'm not really sure the the the. I'm not really remember, but it's almost fifty dollar or maybe fifty dollar cheaper. Less, yeah. So that's because yeah. changing the price for higher price is not a good news, but changing the price <laughs> for a lower price is a very good news. Yep. Um, this is actually uh, this is actually pretty interesting. So uh, that's the second GPU that goes on the market that is seven nanometers from AMD. Yep. This is although as well uh, their new architecture, so it's not officially GCN anymore is called RDNA. <laughs> uh, I haven't gone into the deep dive as well, uh, but there's similarities. It's basically, they, they call that the, the fifth era. So that's uh, like the new new generation, basically. Like they, they consider that as a new advancement in the way they developed uh, the product, but will be interesting to see with the different uh, you know, evolution that's, that's, that's gonna happen. Uh, thing is, one of the questions that we got quite sometimes uh, when we're doing live on Twitter as well was, uh, where does that fit on the market compared to the <laughs> NVIDIA counterpart? Well, the interesting part is with the new pricing that uh, EMD is trying to uh, position the RX 5700 very competitively against like, for example, the 5700, uh, the vanilla without, without XT, is it's their positioning uh, positioning it to the 2000 to 2060 sorry with the 2060 and then the 57 XT the 5700 XT it's directly competing with the 20 uh 2060 super so uh with the performance profile that they're giving i mean well give or take certain games uh, optimization that's a very competitively priced uh, a graphic card. So uh, AMD, on their own numbers, they say that, oh, hey, we have a 5700 vanilla that that are at least 15%. Well, it's more like 10, 10 to 15%, uh, if you're counting some games. 10% uh, faster than um, some of the 2060 card. Well, that's a good price for it because you get um, 10 percent more performance with same prices although uh the interesting part is this is some customers may be thinking that hey if i got nvidia card uh i can play dx dxr games although at up until this point we don't really have a lot of dxr games i mean we have like what metalfield 5 and we have shade of tomb raider we have the Metro, that's three. And then there are a couple more titles going to come out. And the my favorite one, Quake 2 RTX. I mean, it's really funny because Quake 2 is such an old game. But for me personally, that's like one of the best uh, DXR uh, ray tracing, real time ray tracing demo for NVIDIA, like ever. So yeah, Quake 2 RTX. Uh, 
and and that's, that's why funny. Some... You, you went you went into the topic of you went definitely into the topic of yeah. speaking with rtx yeah. <laughs> because i was keeping the ray tracing part just for that part but actually we yeah. can we can deep dive into it because as of now yeah. dxr games are supposed to be enabled only for the rtx even though we know that's yep. not exactly true that's anything that yeah. it, that is the extra compliant will be able to run the game so that's why we're able to run uh ray tracing on 1660 on on previous right. cards because it's just right. a set of uh set of cards there's just not dedicated compute units on those cards but maybe i don't know like uh i haven't so and i haven't seen anyone uh, testing uh, some ray tracing capabilities on the car because it's not activated from the driver from what i understood oh so so here's the thing uh well my testing was cut short because the funny part is i was trying to test the gt axis uh dxr because nvidia opened their dxr for the gtx like a couple months uh and uh for a couple months before and right after um, until that point i have to do the g scale overclocking world cup so i had to cut the test short but uh, from my short data, I could tell you that, well, NVIDIA won with the with enabling the XR with non RTX graphic card. They're actually they're trying to show off their RTX card because uh, right now with the normal like normal load like normal game like the one that the titles I've uh, I've mentioned. If you enable the XR, especially we're talking in Metro, uh, you enable a lot of like global illumination in the in the game. The performance penalty penalty for non RTX card are like huge, like seriously huge. So you could maybe just try to see if you could. Uh, you know, you have to really trade off the the well the visual bling if. Uh, uh, sorry for the lack of the better word. You, you have to really trade off the visual quality with the frame rate because running DXR titles on non-RTX GPU right now gives you really, really, well, less than ideal performance, if I might say. So uh, I was trying that with the 1080 Ti. The, the funny part is uh, I'm really surprised on how the, uh, the new GTX, the 16 series, handles the DXR. I mean... For their pricing, it's uh, quite. I mean, Nvidia says it's because they are enabling their. Uh, they say they have a, what is it? The the simultaneous uh, FP and integer calculation on their on their on their uh, 16 series GPU. That's why they are more efficient in that part. But still, if you really want to play DXR with non RTX card, for example, the GTX card, you really have to be. I mean, really have powerful gpu to do that like 1080 ti are i'm not really sure if 1080 uh vanilla could could really do that with the decent fps and visual quality and, and that was so, yeah. and, and we're gonna get into that topic as well but that was the main point for the rtx card they have dedicated yeah. compute unit just for that which yep. can be offloaded from everything else and basically does not impact that much uh, on the yep. uh, on the basics uh, of performance. So let's go back to the uh, AMD RX, uh, yeah, yeah, five five seven hundred. Um, so we're talking about uh, driver and support. So we took we went into the ray tracing part. Um, there was for for the past years, uh, the support at launch for the drivers have been in, improved. I mean, it went from having a, 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 a lack from a lack from proper driver at launch to proper driver at launch and even support yeah. uh, done the done the things so how did that impact uh because you haven't done your review yet on that card correct oh uh, yeah well i mean i haven't i already do some tests but I haven't been able to you know uh do a lot of in-depth tests to actually make a review and i think uh, there's still some problems with the graphic card for example well i i can release the uh, usually when I do a review, I try my best to, you know, also do an overclocking part. And for some early release drivers, there's some problem with overclocking the card. Well, we have this problem in Radeon 7 too, and I tried my best to overclock that card with a lot of workarounds. Uh, and after that, there there is a proper driver support. And uh, as of now, the, uh, there's a lot of people talking about, you know, modifying like the the power play table to get uh, to get better values and try to tweak out the the the, the GPU for for some of I mean uh, the GPU seems tweakable. I mean, sim uh, the it seems that AMD got the card 
uh, pretty much maxed out from the beginning, but there's a small room of improvement. So, uh, well, if we're talking about driver and support, for me personally, I have to wait if they uh, if they have the uh, all their utility done correctly, and then. Uh, well, about the drivers uh, for for EMD, personally, I think I like the way that they're opening up a lot of possibilities in their driver, and that's uh, the one that NVIDIA have, haven't been doing in their drivers, because I think right now AMD is the only one that actually integrating overclocking uh, tools into their into their drivers. I mean, oh, it's still kind of buggy. So, so, so you're just to just to get everyone on the same page, you're talking about Watman. That is the into Wattman, yes, correct. The, 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 yeah. Wattman, the, Wattman. the Wattman utility that is bundled yeah. into the driver. Piece. Yep, correct. Yeah, the, the Wattman. And uh, also, you see, like last year, they're trying to see, hey, there's a lot of people that are actually mining with the card, you know, when, when mining is still a thing, right? <laughs> and then they, they try to, hey, uh, they, they're trying to adjust the memory timing and they're trying to give that kind of control, although it's kind of like obfuscated. It's not, they don't really tell us what kind of timing that they are, they are doing. But the, the performance improvements are like modest, like three to 4%, well enough to give you a different and overclocking competition but for for everyday for everyday life i'm not really sure you're gonna, that's going you're gonna to type it. faster in word yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so that's pretty it's pretty but, interesting so on on your point of view uh regarding the market segment because the radeon 7 is still the top top high-end one um yeah, these these uh rx5 700s are actually just on the low on the lower not lower like the mid-range market um, do you think that's going to be a good gaming card for people to jump in, uh, or should they, you know, compared to what is going on with the RTX Super, which we're going to talk in a minute? <laughs> like sure. So, uh, if you're talking about the the market right now, well, EMD does position their graphic card in the in the way that people will still have a reason uh, a reason to buy to buy their their card. I mean, with the old pricing, well, we all the reviewers are thinking that, hey, Navi is going to be a debt on arrival. But with the new uh, adjusted pricing, I think uh, there's a compelling reason to buy their car. Well, especially if you already have, like, for example, a FreeSync monitor, like high-end FreeSync monitor, and you really want to use that with your, uh, with your EMD graphic card. And then... There's some group of people that think that a technology like a DXR is not really mature yet, so they're 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 choosing like, uh, well, for me, if they they're they're having a better performance in some games that they play, then the, the AMD graphic card is really competitive in 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 that area. So I think there is still a really good place for them, especially in the three four nine range in the in the uh, especially for for indonesia because well they, they like cheap graphic card so so yeah <laughs> that's so, yeah. good that's gonna be very interesting uh i can't wait to see the review on that once uh let's uh, jump into the rtx super uh can you just brief people on what happened with the launch and uh and where it is on the market as well because we just spoke on the uh, well, on the amd side this one is funny because uh because there's a lot of uh talk about nvidia having something right and that's like way before computer x like two weeks before computer x and they we saw some leaks about nvidia's having something super something like that and then and when when everybody's already hey what what kind of stuff that nvidia released today in the computer x we only saw that well they are having like content creation laptops and nothing about uh, desktop graphic are being mentioned. So there was like kind of uh, a surprise when NVIDIA, like one of the NVIDIA PR guy actually email my boss about it and they say, hey, uh, can you can you can we brief one of your graphic card reviewer? And at that time I was the only one available. So and <laughs> they say, I was like, uh, oh, sure, uh, what kind of briefing? Uh, this is still under NDA. I'll, 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 if I'm not uh, mistaken, that happened on 28th of June. So it's basically uh, sometimes a week before the AMD release of the Navi, uh, the Navi card and also the Zen 2. And, and there, they're briefing us a very, that's only like five slides 
about how we're having the simplified version is that we're having a better 2060 and a better 2070 and a better 2080. That's it. So well, the, the, the most interesting part is the 2060 Super because they're not only beefed up the, the compute unit, they beefed up the memory too to eight gigabyte. Uh, and then, and also the memory bandwidth because uh, with that memory improvement, they also improved the, the memory bus. And for a modern graphic card, especially if you're running at like more than 1080p resolution, like 1440p or maybe uh, above and beyond, and with some with some certain titles and games, uh, memory bandwidth is still one of the key factors that give you the, the, the more performance. I mean, if you cannot really overclock the, the GPU, then you could outrun that uh, performance increment by overclocking the, the GDDR6, even though it's already like running really fast. So the, uh, that's the 2060. Same happened with the 2070. The funny part is happening on the 2080 Super. They are not just maxing out the the, the CUDA core or compute unit, uh, if you say it, in the in the GPU, but they are also trying to uh, uh, try to give a faster GDDR, uh, try to give you faster video memory. The the which in which way that it's funny. The in the leak we saw a couple a couple specs that actually changed. First one they say, hey, it's a 14 gig, uh, 14 GBPS, and uh, the next leak say it's a 16 GBPS. And after in Nvidia briefing they told us it's actually 15.5 or something. So it's kind of telling that they're trying to really push out all the limits in their graphic card. And that's for 2080 Super. But for 2080 Super, I'm not really sure how many uh, improvement that they're going to have. Well, Nvidia's, uh, Nvidia said that they're going to send that graphic card maybe either tomorrow or probably today. So, well, I'm looking forward for that too because I could uh, finally see how much that 2080 Super uh, closing on their 2080 Ti, but their Super right now, I'm not really sure about the 2070. Well, the, the, in the 2070 Super, they're, they're saying that, hey, with this card, we are finally faster than the GTX 1080 Ti. It's kind of interesting when NVIDIA talk it like that because they're trying to one-up their uh, their previous really fast graphic card, the 1080 Ti, and then they're saying that, 2060 Super is faster than GTX uh, 10 1080. For for me for me I think and also like most of Indonesians I think the 2060 Super is going to be quite interesting in the way that they're giving that performance for that level of like pricing. And and that pricing will be on par with the uh, RX 5700. Yeah, correct. That that's that's uh, that's the one that makes it kind of interesting. Uh, the problem was that uh, it's not a problem for Nvidia. It's more a problem with EMD that EM, uh, Nvidia is releasing uh, Nvidia's partners already releasing the 2060 supers on the we call it the custom card. So we we have a, a, at least a beefed up cooler for the card. And you see for high performance graphics, I mean, for normal users, I mean, for everyday users, coolers is the one that actually having the main concern because with the graphic card working, uh, how, how they are working right now, coolers going to give them a really big advantage in the boost, maintaining the boost clock and also, well, maintaining the overclocking headroom as well. So, so yeah, but EMD card right now, it's all, well, basically it's reference card and we see a lot of like, if we if we read about like 10 to 15 reviews about the RX 5700, maybe almost all reviewers could agree that the cooler was kind of somewhat lackluster. I mean, it works. It's still, for, it's still well, the old blower type. Yep. Well, we, uh, the problem is that every single time everybody releases a blower, we're kind of giving like a hope that hey, this one is going to work. But apparently, it's been it's been more than ten <laughs> years. It's never changed. <laughs> we have to give it away. It's it's not gonna change. <laughs> But, but well, some people says that hey, maybe it's 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 like that because AMD is trying to you know lower the like the noise and that's why they're kind of focusing on you know uh, like the 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 noise and something and that's why the the fan profile is not really aggressive and 
well, the, the problem is you put it at at least 70%, the, the, the value that could actually keep the card uh, in acceptable range for some people. It's already kind of noisy. So, well, NVIDIA, I think, already get their head start here with the RTX Super because most of their partners already ready with the at least custom cooler. I'm not really sure about the PCB. And, and, it's, I mean, I, and it's, it should be a very similar... Uh... ECB for the for the for the card as well. I mean, if if you were an add-in board partner and you already made your own version of the 2060 or the 2070 or the 2080, then it's going to be easy to just do the same but super because that's that should yeah. be very similar. Change uh, the GPU, correct? Yeah, or just Assuming unlock the firmware. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming they're pin compatible, that is. <laughs> so 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 yeah. I mean, I think they already and also for the the RTX Super, especially the 2060. I think the T uh, NVIDIA's rating is like TGP or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, basically, the TDP or terminal output rating for, for the card has not changed much. Well, for NVIDIA standard, that is. Uh, so I think the coolers that already been used for the 2060 with the aftermarket, are like third party, like we we're talking about like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, and EVGA and so on, they already have their own like coolers that have really good headroom for the for the for the card, and that's will that will make that R the RTX super well more interesting in the uh, in the noise profile and also in the in the the cooling profile. I think I think that's it. And and sustaining the boost clock longer would be interesting in, in games as well yep. because I've seen yep. I've seen reviews where that boost clock, which is the the frequency of the, the the core, for example, is actually going higher under certain kind of loads. Sometimes it's not going to the to the max it can go, but uh, it's it's still like depending on the cooling, you can have maybe a, a more sustain for that. Uh, so it's called huh? RTX Super. Do you think we're gonna get a GTX Super as well? Well, I'm not really sure. Although I, I do remember that many people are actually asking, is there a 2080 Ti Super? Because you see, we already have the 2060, right? We have the 2060, we have the 2070, we have the 2080, and where's the 2080 Ti? Although, well, I kind uh, well, I have a mixed feeling about 2080 Ti Super. You see, uh, at the end of the year, usually one of the vendors like Galax have a really big overclocking tournaments, and they're using like the latest and greatest hardware. So I was kind of hoping like this year, Nvidia is really something for for so we could you know play with the latest and greatest hardware from them. But there is no uh, Nvidia doesn't doesn't even actually answers if we ask them about the 2080 Ti Super and then they just ask that uh, we are not going to talk about the unreleased product and so on and so on. But but still, uh, for example, the the funny part if we're talking about the improvement, right? The 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 improvement in the in the 2060 Super is quite quite decent. I mean it's quite improved that it actually makes you think that hey does NVIDIA already have this in their sleeves and they're just waiting for AMD for release something and they could just release some counter for it. I mean but I'm not really sure I mean how 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 that can that can and, and, and for, for people yeah. that actually don't follow like tightly this kind of industry. Uh, basically there was a range of products that got just yeah. one up just like this <laughs> on, on like a yep. two weeks notice. Uh, so basically, yeah. the old 2060 doesn't exist anymore. It's end of uh, it still exists, but it's uh, it's gonna be cheaper. Uh, the 2060 Super is pretty much the performances of the 2070 previous one, which is now end of life, which is not gonna exist anymore, being replaced by the 2070 Super, which is close to a 2080, which is yeah. end of life although now, which is replaced by the 2080 Super, the which is super. not quite a 2080 Ti, but no, it's still better. <laughs> Yeah, but but you see, the, the the funny part is how they are able to release a, a part. They're actually, you know, like just enough difference so people would be compelled to buy it. But I think the one that they're the Nvidia is keeping is only the twenty the twenty sixty vanilla without the super the RTX twenty sixty. But I'm not really sure about the adjustment for prices for that one. 
Uh, so so that's Nvidia have it going for uh, some some and Nvidia users maybe if they really wanted to buy a new graphic card the 2060 Super might be interesting for them but I'm not really sure about the pricing because depend on the pricing maybe the 20 2060 the old 2060 could be interesting if if they're priced right the the problem is that uh, when I do some review with the 2060 well, well the and when NVIDIA released the 2060 Super, their tagline was, this was faster than GTX 1080. Well, with proper overclocking and proper cooler on the 2060, you could beat 10, 10, 1080. It's not it's not that hard. I mean, you, you can only uh, increase 8% from your default and you're already past the 1080. So it's not really that difficult to just to just uh, go to the 10, 1080 uh, performance, uh, performance level. But... But yeah, we sh we really need to wait until the you know like the a uh, couple months to see if the pricing have stabilized for for the twenty sixty and the and the twenty sixty super as well. So okay. yeah. Do you think uh, last question before we move to Ryzen because that's gonna be a hard topic as well. Uh, yep. <laughs> do you think we're gonna get a Titan RTX super or a super Titan? <laughs> Well, uh, the Titan right now is uh, I'm not really sure the the the, the last Titan the, the RTX Titan they're the, they're already releasing is pretty much already like the units is pretty much full so I'm not really sure how they are going to improve on that one although although you see uh, well uh, answering your question I'm not really sure if Nvidia is going to release a, a newer Titan but they could if they want I just don't see how they could do that although. Uh, with that logic, if NVIDIA want to improve the 2080 Ti, they don't really need to adjust the compute unit. Uh, for in in my opinion, they just need to adjust their power limit. That's it. The the 2080 Ti, especially the Founders Edition, it has a solo power limit, and also the the thermal uh, cooling performance on that graphic card is really limited. The the 2080 for the 2080 Ti when you really overclocked it. So there is at least a 20, 15 to 20% difference that NVIDIA could have by giving a higher memory clock, higher memory rating, and, and also a, a more, for example, they tell the, the, the vendors, hey, you could do like three times eight PCIe pins. So uh, there's a, the, the, the defenders could give like, 450 watts of you know like power uh so, so removing the, the limitation that the are power. in place yep. today power, power uh, for Correct. the power limits that's, that's already yeah that's uh for 28 2060 2070 i'm not really sure if power is like uh it's it's limiting for sure but it's not as much as the 2080 ti like for example the galaxy card i have it doesn't have any power limit so but but you could clearly see that that graphic card is like a monster. The Galax card, the the EVGA Kingpin card, when you put that card with the BIOS with no power limit, I mean that card is a monster. And if Nvidia really want to release something above 2080 Ti, all they need to do is just increase the memory's rating a bit, and then just I mean unleash the power limit. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> thank you for thank you for our opinion on on that, Alva. All right. Let's move to Ryzen 3, uh, 3, uh, 3, 3000 series. I'm getting super tired. Wow. Uh, we have <laughs> we have about 22 minutes left before we have. So we have to wrap up this uh, Ryzen part, which is a big chunk of it in a very short time. All right, short. AMD came up with Zen 2 architecture. The first CPU to implement that is Ryzen third generation, which is the 3000 series. So there's a different CPUs, uh, the main one are the 3800X and the 3900X. They have the X1, they have the non-X1. It's just a matter of how they can overclock. <laughs> <laughs> These came with a new set of motherboard based on X570 chipsets, and we saw all of them at Computex. Uh, but now it's all the details are now actually in the wild. Like you can buy them, you can basically get the, uh, the system uh, up and running. Uh, price point and availability for both the th the CPU and the motherboard were a big change. Uh, right. So, Alva, what what was your first thought when you when you first saw the CPU and then when you saw the motherboard pricing? Well, 
on a short note on the CPU, there uh, there's a, a bit of like um, uh, a lot of people getting it wrong when uh, there's a Ryzen 3, 3000 series and there is Ryzen 3rd Gen. It's not actually the same because Ryzen 3000 series start with the APU, right? Mm -hmm. The 3200G, the, the cheaper ones, the non-Zen 2 core part, the 3200G and 3400G, and then the real Zen 2 part, the 3rd Gen, the Ryzen 3rd Gen start at the 3600 and above, 3600, 3600X, 3700X, 3800, and 3900X. So the, the, the big change here is the, well, the CPU's pricing is still, still interesting. I mean, well, they're, they're giving 12 core for $500. I mean, that's the same pricing as 9900K. So uh, it's very priced very competitively to the Intel counterpart. The big difference is the motherboard. And you can clearly see that the motherboard nowadays for the, the new X570 is really pushing the limit. I mean, not only in design, but also in the price points. You can, you can clearly see the almost up to $700, maybe more motherboard, like the MSI Godlike or uh, Gigabytes Aorus Extreme. Uh, that's not like the the thing that AMD used to do or even the motherboard vendor used to do. Maybe they're just thinking that, hey, uh, this time the AMD is giving a really good product and uh, there's a time to to make uh, to take this one to another level. So let's make some high-end platform for it and then let's, let's see how the market reacts to that. I think something along that, those lines. And it's very interesting because for the past 10 years, the the average price for an AMD based system was pretty in the mid to low range, which is even the CPU are still very priced uh, competitively. That might sure. be changing, especially with the price of motherboard. You have motherboard that costs more than the CPU. Yeah, correct. <laughs> and that, that usually never happened for AMD. I mean, uh, the, the mantra for AMD uh, is like uh, they're giving the best value out there, the best price performance uh, ratio. And then that's usually like the like mainstream CPU with the mainstream motherboard. And AMD also offers a really good overclocking support on their uh, ma mainstream uh, series, the one that actually Intel doesn't have because Intel only allow you to overclock on their highest end chipset in the in the in the mainstream range, so something like that. But yeah, uh, this time we see a lot of uh, motherboard vendors trying to really really push the limit on the on the motherboard design and also the price point as well. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's going to be very interesting to see uh, how that turns out. Release wise, uh, it's been two weeks. This is on the market. Actually, not even two weeks. Like less than a, a little bit more than a week that it's on the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for us, it's been a longer time that we you know hear about that. Yep. Um, what is your opinion for end users for AMD coming back uh, at this point uh, in the market? Well, well, uh, especially there's uh, three products from the Zen two lineup that. For me, that's very interesting. The first one, obviously, the cheapest one, the 3600 one. The one that actually have, I'm being told by AMD Indonesia that they're trying to give us some shops for you know for for selling to people, and they're kind of sold out on the day one. Uh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> and then the second one is the 3700X. It's uh, it's an eight core replacement for the 2700X. Uh, it comes with a, a really uh, decent. Uh, prism cooler for the TDP, I mean, and then the, also the last one is the 3900X, the 12 core part. Well, for gaming wise, uh, the the IPC improvement for 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 this uh, model have been really, really, I mean, really, really high, really, really big, and uh, I think that's the if you're doing some research on the reviews, I think that's the one that you find the most difference is the the gaming performance and uh, i think maybe it's have something to do with uh, their reworking uh, their cache uh, usually games is like uh, there's a lot of games that are actually memory intensive and the previous uh, ryzen series shows a really big difference between like uh, the tweak and non-tweak on the on the on the on the memory as well. So AMD says that with their latency, uh, with their I mean with their cache, they've managed to uh, pull down their late memory latency, overall memory latency, and uh, some games scales really well with that. Also with the with the with the IPC uh, with their IPC improvement on the overall units as well, and also the, they have a really good AVX performance for now. 
So so yeah, the, I mean the performance is really 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 decent. Especially on the memory side, like the, the the review shows that if you get a higher frequency memory with the same timings, it will be better. But even if you get loser timing, that's still gonna work. Um, did you make a lot of uh, testing on that on your side on different games? Because I know on the encoding part, but I haven't checked on the on the games. Well, for 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 games especially, I mean, uh, if we're not talking about uh, the memory clocking right now, is slightly complicated because like in the uh, for the last generation, it's like everything is like synchronized the the memory controller clock, the the fabric clock, and then the memory clock as well. It's all uh, interconnected. But this time, AMD is trying to give something for the you know like tweakers. They're trying to decouple some of the stuff. The problem is if you're not running synchronized, there's a latency penalty. And for now, as aside from benchmarking, like competitive benchmarking, I'm not really seeing that kind of uh, improvement in uh, in performance. So basically, you could hit high memory clock with loose timings, but uh, you lose a lot of like performance. So for for gaming, uh, running all synchronized. Uh, the the CPU the we call it the F clock the F clock and then the memory the memory clock uh, the the memory clock and the F clock synchronize is uh is the best way and you see in the 3900 series uh, AMD gave us the 3600 memory kit to review right but just by overclocking that memory to 3800 with the same CL, like CL16, right? 16, 16, 16. And you tweak the sub timings, you could get at least 5 to 10% of gaming performance more out of a 3900X. And in my review, that will make the 3900X matches the 9900K at 5G. So that's, that's interesting. That's a big, and that's and a big do, deal. Do you think that's going to switch as well some of the focus from just pure CPU frequency? All the way to a this is more about like a balance in your system performances as you have to go into the memory now more than it used to be before that it was a hey, activate xmp or activate the uh the settings that you have on your ram um if it's sub timings that means the knowledge that you need to have to go get this extra boost without going too in depth is not going to yeah. be there for most of the people right yep Yep, yep. The uh, and you see the problem is kind of uh, in happens on some uh, some levels that you see that AMD now is uh, have support for at least three six hundred right. AMD told told us that the the official support is three two hundred like that's the official number, but they they're saying that. Uh, all, almost all of their uh, units, and also like what what I observe in my my testing, uh, I haven't been able to find a Zen two that cannot do three six hundred. So you see the 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 three six hundred kits when the customer bought it, it's usually uh, has some sub timings that actually tune for stability and not performance. So right now, what we can do, uh, what what I'm trying to do is I'm giving my data to the to a to a motherboard vendor, well MSI in in specifics, and try to 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 let them know that if you have a profile that could just load this specific sub timings on this specific uh, frequency, then you could get like extra boost of performance without uh, sacrificing stability. So yeah. So this is part of the early testing and uh, yep. and an improvement you do with the industry, and you have been doing that for for quite some times as well. I mean, yeah, like, true. I, I basically since you started in this industry. <laughs> well, the, the, well, uh, you see, for for me personally, I mean, as an overclocker, not as a reviewer. Well, as an overclocker, I, I'm 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 happy when there's an overclocker have some impact on at least pushing the technology forward. For example, like like a professional overclocker like Daniel, like Dan Cop, they're having his profile on the on the Asus motherboard. I think that's a kind of really a good thing. So well, the the technology limits are being you know unlocked by those that actually play with these things. So that's that's the thing that actually I really respect out of the all of the professional overclocker like your Bauer trying to you know. In fact, from from uh, from inventing like the leading tools, and then just in general trying to help the community and uh, understanding better why we still do overclocking. So yeah. Uh, speaking speaking of performances, actually, um, there was a lot of discussion about the auto overclocking feature on this uh, on this <laughs> new uh, CPU. So can you can you for, right. for people that have haven't read the reviews yet, can you explain what it does? 
So what he's expecting to do and how people are abusing it. So here's the thing. Um, I already talked to AMD and uh, basically the automatic overclocking is a really good uh, concept. So there, AMD actually kind of admit that we are already bidding our CPU at almost its uh, leaves no headrooms for normal, like normal multi-core overclocking, right? So uh, AMD's auto overclocking is a kind of a way for AMD to say, hey, we built an algorithm for our CPU. So the CPU could recognize the new boost clock limits with you using this automatic overclocking. The problem is, and I can say this clearly now, in my system, it doesn't really work. And until any you know normal person could just download the utility, ap apply the settings, and 99% of the platform can make it work, I don't think that we could really tell people that 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 kind of thing work. I mean, well, I saw the video and they say, hey, we could make the boost clock. Uh, what was the claim? Like 4.75? I'm not really sure. Even if the 3900X and uh, Roman their power already tested actually could could maintain or even hit that 4.6 uh, limit in a, in a sustained manner. I mean, maybe you could hit that with a very specific like workload with a very specific cooling and maybe a specific chip could do that. But even even on the highest end, their, their CPU is already like been to the max. The, the right now, uh, you could do overclock for multi-core overclocking, but you will sacrifice like that, that kind of maximum maximum boost. So I was hoping the automatic overclocking to work, but sadly now it doesn't really, uh, it's not really where it should be right now. So so, so yeah. you, what you're saying, if I if I rephrase that, uh, there's a disrespectancy between the advertisement frequency and the actual frequency that people will get on Correct. the system. Correct. <laughs> well, so um, the problem is that uh, when AMD says that the CPU, they're carefully wording it, I, I believe that this is up to 4.6. So we are ex kind of expected to hit 4.6, but not all the time. The problem is that will the end user feel like tricked or maybe... Uh, I'm not really sure what, what the word to say this, but it does they feel cheated that the CPU not really hitting its advertised maximum boost clock like in a sustained manner? Are are or are they going to be okay with that? Because well, at least the CPU does really well in the single threaded workloads. I, I mean like really light workloads, so users are okay with that. But yeah, I mean in my testing in the really high boost clock. Uh, part like the 3900X, it's really hard to see the CPU hit 4.6 in a controlled, uh, sustained manner. So, yeah. um, if you have to do a parallel, uh, this is the same concept with the boost clock on GPU. Like having this boost clock sustained is is sometimes tricky. So we are having a similar kind of challenges now on on, on both sides of the platform. Problem is, problem is. Uh, right now, the, 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 the problem that I've been having, especially with my viewers that usually are not really too technical, I have to explain to them that the boost clock they're seeing on the box, on the label, is not usually the one they're seeing. Problem is that we have so many funders trying to push the clocks that we don't really know what kind of what kind of uh, standard we have to follow. For example, in the MD Zen 2, when they say up to 4.6, uh, it means 4.6 is like the absolute best case, right? But in NVIDIA RTX Super, I mean, when, when NVIDIA says that, hey, our boost clock is around 1500 or maybe 1700, I could see the graphic card boosted to 1.9, maybe more, if the workload is light enough and your temperature actually allows you to hit that kind of like boost clock. So there's a lot of different standard between vendors in the way they are trying to rate their boost clock uh, in, their, in their hardware. And it makes really hard for us reviewers because we have to lock I mean, at least run some standardized tests for, for me, it's a 3D Mars stress test, and then tell the user, hey, if you use this uh, graphic card, this is the, the average clock that you're going to uh, going to uh, find in the 
probably your normal average games and well that's kind of make our lives slightly harder <laughs> so but but that's to be expected so yeah that's interesting uh just uh, just a word on the extreme of work looking with uh, that Ryzen platform, uh, you posted on Facebook that you had some time to play with it, but not enough as you would have expected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. Well, to be perfectly honest, um, I, I did have some XOC time back in Computex. Well, uh, this uh, MSL let me play on their platform for a couple of hours, very tightly guarded. I cannot take screenshots and something, but, uh, but, but at that point, I kind of knew where AMD is going with this. The problem is that where, oh, where if we're talking about the XOC part, there's a uh, difference between the, the AMD have the one CCD CPU, the one with the with the uh, one die, one CPU die, and the one with the two CPU die, the three nine hundred axes. And in the three nine hundred X, there's a lot of uh, part variation that will give you different cold bug points. So basically, the the, the point where you could pour the liquid nitrogen just to make the temperature go as low as possible is slightly different in uh, uh, compared to the last generation. Right now we have to fight to to check if our part allows for lower uh, operating temperatures and maybe there will be more like tweaks or something that will be discovered in the next week or month or so. I actually, I saw Asus and also Gigabyte already play with their uh, CPU and they're getting, they're getting really, really good results. I mean, at least 200 megahertz better than me. So, so yeah. So there's still improvement to make. There's always improvement to make. There's always improvement. Yeah, correct. Um, so, so this is actually a lot of information. And Very. If, <laughs> if, 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 if we remind people back, all those hardware came up at pretty much the same time, early yes. July. How was it for you as a reviewer? So here's the thing. We have to, we have to select between sleeping and not getting our job done. Problem is that our office are actually already know our condition and they don't push us to actually follow the schedule. Problem is, if we don't follow the schedule, our readers, well, our loyal readers, and you know, like maybe in YouTube uh, watcher, uh, a YouTube uh, channel, they don't really see the content in the same day. They will say, "Hey, you don't, you're not really into the stuff, and you you don't really wanted to review stuff like this." I mean, the prop, although the problem part was that I was like really pushing hard to you know getting just getting stuff done at this point so i was kind of hoping next time there is a hardware release that the vendors actually takes into concern uh what kind of time that the reviewers are doing it problem is that the hardware today is very complex it's not i mean i could clearly say that uh at least five years ago uh, well, I'm better than I, I was five years ago. I know more stuff than five years ago. But at l five years ago, I don't I don't have to finish a two CPU and three GPU review in five days. So, so I I, 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 I cannot <laughs> believe how you guys are doing it. And this goes for yeah. you. This goes for the Jagat review team. This goes for uh, the Anon Every, Tech team. This yeah. goes for the Legit review yeah. team. This goes for uh, Kid Guru for all the guys. Uh, this is insane. I mean, I, we have seen our friends on Twitter saying like, don't try to talk to us for the next 10 days, for the next five days. We so, are swamped. So, so yeah. It's, 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 it's hard. And especially for the, for the, I was really looking forward to see the, well, one of my favorite website is Anantech. I think they already know that actually I read them like all the time. I, I don't really know how they managed to put out so much content in that short of a time. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do that. So, and, and also one of the YouTube channels, uh, for example, like Gamers Nexus and the Hardware Unbox also have a like, good amount of uh, data they're being able to put out despite the, the, the short time frame. I mean, problem is that if, uh, if I try to do that in a short time frame, I will do like less in-depth look of the, of the hardware itself. And the one I'm being scared about is that when I just do a benchmark, when I just putting out benchmark data, I mean, that's not really meaningful because I'm not really covering the technology. I'm just putting the graphic card or CPU or maybe whatever hardware through a certain benchmark and try to, 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 to give some data to our viewers. 
problem is, is that that's not the ideal way to do things. I mean, there's a lot of things that you, you should do before doing like a benchmark, like doing an analysis on the architecture, maybe see how the frequency does stuff, how the, how the frequency voltage scaling does on some CPU, maybe how memory is scaling on some CPU. I mean, and those stuff takes time. So yeah, I was kind of hoping next time there will be at least uh, room to breathe when there is uh, stuff like this uh, in the in the long run in the next gen hardware. So 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 my last question for you would be: Are you over yet? Can you just relax and do some extreme OC? You uh, still have a lot of things to finish. In the extreme OC part. I'm actually thankfully already done with my part because well my part this was just validating a certain motherboard and give them my settings and for them to validate and check if it worked for them and as far as XOC part in the Ryzen Gen uh, Gen 3 it's already done I mean it's already finished I may look at it probably like one or two months from now if I already uh, got the part because I need to buy CPU, right? And there's no uh, 3900X uh, available in Indonesia. I mean, there there is a CPU, but a very small amount. I'm not really able to, you know, buy those. They're usually like pre-order stuff or something like that. But I'm not really done with reviews at least for the next two, two months, maybe? Two months, yeah, correct. Two months would be like at least... <laughs> But by so, by yeah. by the time in two months there'll be a new release of hardware and you're gonna have to yeah, start correct. again. <laughs> I know. Well, well, the 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 what I'm really looking forward in the next two or three months is the custom RX five seven hundred series card. So with the new coolers, I'm hoping that new coolers will give you know at least better thermal performance and maybe better overclocking headroom if if there was any for those. And 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 yeah. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see if NVIDIA really is something faster than 2080 Ti. Really looking forward for it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's stay tuned and uh, catch up with you back in uh, in two months, like around end of September. That should be uh, yep. that should be it. Uh, thank you, Alva. Uh, wish Thanks. you the best. Thank you for very much for being here with us. Uh, thank you for you guys on the show for joining us uh, either live on Twitch, on the replay on YouTube or through the podcast on the different platforms. Uh, if you want to show the support for the show, you can make a donation at the link in the description uh, below or on the platform uh, podcast platform. Uh, if you like the content, uh, you just have to share it with your cycle because the more people watch it, the easier for us it's to do that kind of show. If you want to have some specific type of content, because we do a lot of things, we talk about AR, XR, we talked about uh, the behind the scenes at trade shows and so on. If you if you want to have a specific kind of content, send us an email at contact at overclocking-tv.com. So it's contact at overclocking-tv.com. And this podcast was recorded live on Twitch with Alva from Jagat OC Jagat Review. And you can check uh, them out and, to, and know more about him and the team at jagatreview.com. Until next time, keep pushing it. Bye-bye.